Hey, so I would like to make a video about um, just kind of like the symptoms that I've had with both of my pregnancies. So if you don't know, I've had two pregnancies and I miscarried the first one and now I'm pregnant again. And I'm not very far along, but I have had such blatant symptoms that it's just kind of crazy. Um, like within days of conceiving the baby, it will be blatant and really easy for me to tell. I think I might be pregnant because there are weird things going on in me that I definitely feel. Um, pretty much the whole time with both pregnancies, I've had weird stomach pain. So like if I'm laying down on bed, and my husband puts his head on my stomach. It's like, no, you have to take it off. Um, the first time it kind of felt like gas cramps. Like a lot of gas was there, and but I couldn't relieve myself. The second time now with this pregnancy, it's like an achiness. Not really gassy air filled but just more like an achiness so I don't know if that's the difference between I was going to miscarriage or miscarry or what I don't know but this time I really noticed like I, I had a hard time sleeping not last night but the night before I couldn't sleep throughout the night because everywhere I turned it felt like I was putting too much pressure on my stomach and it just really really hurt so that's one of the most easy symptoms for me to have noticed um where I'm like I think I'm pregnant um, second of all, it would be the cravings. It's like to the day almost or to, you know, the few days. Like I know I'm pregnant because I'm craving salt and I really, uh, like we'll go out to Mexican food. I love Mexican food. I'm not usually big about salt because I don't want to take a lot of sodium in and get real bloated, but I will crave it and like grab the salt shaker and like pour it over the basket of chips and just, there won't be ever enough. Um, and it's funny, like my husband will often be like, what are you doing? Like you never do that. Why are you doing that now? And I just, there's not enough salt, I need more salt. I get angry about it. Like, who didn't put enough salt in my chips? <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's one of the biggest cravings. And then also, I do not like chocolate. Long story short, I went to Africa, had a weird piece of some kind of weird chocolate, and it ruined chocolate for me. And I haven't liked chocolate for the last, uh, like, four years. But, um... I have been craving chocolate and so I'll go out and get myself chocolate chips like those bags and just eat them and go through that in like a week or like I got myself like a chocolate bar and went through that in just a few days like I just really am enjoying the chocolate thing and I feel like a woman but normally like if I wasn't pregnant like the like the time in between the two pregnancies I wasn't into the chocolate thing so it's just funny a second like within days I get pregnant I've noticed I start craving salt and chocolate <laughs> Um, frequent being, of course, that's also noticeable right away. Um, and I think they said that's because things are moving and your bladder is actually smaller. I don't know. I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> but, um, yes, I did notice, especially with the first pregnancy, because it was just such a big difference in my peeing. Um, it's like I take two sips of water and I have to get up and pee. That's like how often I have to pee. Yeah, I know. So, um, freaking peeing, bloating. I bloated last time, but I'm definitely bloating more this time. Like, it's noticeable, and I'm only four or five weeks along in gestational period. Like, I'm not far along, and I'm really bloating. Like, I'm just waiting for somebody to say, girl, you pregnant? You know, like, it's noticeable. And I don't know if it's all the salt or what, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> and um, it's not just in my mind. My, my husband notices it, too, and he's gracious to me. Um... I, um, my husband has noticed with this one, especially that I have had like heavier, fuller looking breasts and just within the last few days, I've noticed a more tenderness in, with the nipples and not like the whole time that I was like, but it's just within the last few days. So around what week four, um, okay. With this pregnancy, so with my second pregnancy and not with my first, I've really noticed how my blood sugar will drop. I'm kind of more in tune with my blood sugar and I feel it. Um, I have a weird diet and I was, I did struggle with anorexia and bulimia for a little while. And so I notice a lot more than like the average person on when my blood sugar drops. It's like my brain becomes gray and fuzzy and foggy and I just need a snack and then I'm good and then I get in a better mood and all those things. Um, and with this pregnancy, I really noticed, the second pregnancy, I really noticed my blood sugar drops, like, if I haven't eaten anything in three hours. Like, it drops, like, no, 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 maybe it's, like, two and a half. Like, it is, like, on the clock, like, you need to eat something, you can't function, like, you can't drive unless you eat something. 
this baby's needy, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, that's, um, oh, and of course, like the definite stomach ache slash nausea. So like, for example, this morning, I usually have myself about four scrambled eggs. I know I love my little protein in the morning. Um, but I wake up and I look at those eggs in the fridge and they nauseated me. And so I was like, okay, I'll chop some juice and see. And five minutes later, I'm like, where are my eggs? I need my eggs. I'm hungry. So I'll have like nausea. And sometimes it's just like right before I get really, really hungry. And then sometimes I'll just have nausea after I eat. It's weird. It's intermixed, but it's not like withholding me from eating. So, <laughs> and I haven't like thrown up or anything. Um, and of course, moodiness. So crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't PMS super bad. I've never really noticed myself to be like, I think that fight I had was because I'm PMSing. I noticed myself like maybe crying a little bit more or letting things, like being a little bit more sensitive, but not to this level. Like the first round of pregnancy, I was, I remember we were having a fight in the car and I was like, I don't know why I'm so angry at you. There, it really doesn't make sense, but I'm angry at you and you did this to me and I was like either I'm pregnant or this really bothers me and I don't know why <laughs> I was pregnant <laughs> so and I remember him saying I think you're just pregnant faith honestly and I was um and unfortunately we lost that baby but this time around I also have noticed that and of course I was dealing with depression and sadness because we had lost a previous baby um but even more so I just had the hormones of being pregnant and being depressed and sad all combined and so it's been an emotional last few weeks um those are the big those are the big signs let me check my other list just in case i forget anything because can't forget anything um i just want to be helpful if you're like yeah i have extreme weird out of the ordinary signs that are happening they very well might be that um they're not like, at first, I didn't notice them to, like, you don't want to ever be in your head, you know? But, um, yeah, it's like, I've never had anything like this before, kind of level of stuff. Um, sorry. Oh, and with my first pregnancy, I really noticed I would go from extreme cold to extreme hot to extreme cold to extreme, I'm so hot, I'm so hot. Oh, now I'm really, 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 really cold. And I don't know why. Maybe it was because the climate out of that. I was staying at the beach the week before I found out I was pregnant, but still... It was like I was staying indoors all day long and I noticed it. So um, I've also had otter um, bowel movements. I will have, um, oh, I don't know if I talked about my discharge. I talked to you about that too. I've had weird bowel movements. So for my first pregnancy, I noticed it was like constant diarrhea. And with this one, I've kind of noticed a similarity. It's not maybe as bad, but I am home this time. So maybe it just doesn't seem as bad because I'm at home. I could take care of it. <laughs> um, and I eat weird. Uh, and I was eating weird with that first pregnancy when I found out because I was at this camp scenario. So I was living up for like protein bars. But um, I really do think that there's a level of diarrhea that comes with pregnancy because it just seems unwarranted sometimes. Okay, and then with the discharge, this is totally TMI, so if you don't want to know intimate details about my life or my discharge, X out now. Um, but literally, like, the first couple days after, maybe until a week and a half after um, conception, I noticed both times that I had odd discharge, maybe even an odd um, smell. I kind of smell like my husband down there. <laughs> um, and I'm usually pretty clean. Uh, I've never really have been one that has to like douche a lot or clean a lot down there. I get, I have gotten urinary tract infections, but it wasn't like, I didn't see it coming and no, like my husband hasn't ever said I'm dirty or anything like that. Um, but with, I mean, when I'm trying to get pregnant, it's not like I immediately go and pee after we have sex. I like, try and put my feet up and, you know, try and let it soak in. So I felt like, oh, maybe it's just because it's soaking in and staying in there and not really getting flushed out right away that maybe weird things are happening but I think it's something sorry I don't know why I'm playing with this <laughs> I think it's um something related because it is has only happened the months I've gotten pregnant that have like a weird smell and a weird discharge after just a few days maybe a week after um so yeah that's definitely TMI but that's helpful if you're like what is going on down there should I do should I not do I don't do instead because I'm trying to get pregnant and I don't want to flush any good stuff out. I just, 
I don't always do this just so I won't get a UTI, but like I take cranberry pills every day and that's supposed to help clean you out and, um, help with your, um, mm, what is it called? You don't want to mess up your like pH balance down there. I think that's right. So anyway, it's so confusing, but yes, I hope that's helpful. If you are one of those people that is watching videos online on YouTube and you may be pregnant or you may not be pregnant, but you're just interested, I don't think there's any shame in that. Let me just throw that out there. There's no shame in that. Be informed. I do that all the time. I just want to be informed about it. I just want to learn so that when it happens, maybe you have a little bit more insight and it's not just like, what is happening in life? You know? Um, so keep watching. Keep watching videos. Go hear other people's wisdom. Maybe I'm just a weirdo, but I kind of knew I was pregnant days after we conceived so there's that <laughs> and not all girls are like that so there's another thing um but be encouraged i'll let you know if anything absolutely changes so maybe you want to subscribe i don't know but um if anything does change i will probably post a video about it because i want people to stay informed and i just feel like we're in this age where it's like information is so valuable but also it's like certain types of information, if you know what I mean. And um, it's just, there's something good about, I mean, this has just stood the test of time about hearing people's wisdom, old women's wisdom of women who have gone before you and said, well, this is how my first period went. This is how my first pregnancy went. This is how my miscarriage went, whatever. Um, it is important to listen to other people's stories because I always assume that I'm gonna have the worst story, the story that's online on WebMD or whatever, and I'm not. I'm not. I thought I was going to take forever to regulate my hormones and stuff and get pregnant again after my first miscarriage. It was absolutely not like that. Go watch another video, you know? So, um, it's just encouraging. And I hope you guys are encouraged that you are your own story. And though you're watching videos of other people's stories online, you're your own and the Lord has written your story and he knows your path. And as long as he's enough for you, then bring what life may bring. But he's enough for you and he's carrying you through. And when you look back in the sand, it's just his feet, you know, his footsteps carrying you. So, I don't know. Maybe that's encouraging to you. Maybe this this information was slightly helpful. Maybe you've already X out of this video. But thank you. I hope this is helpful. That's the only reason why I post these videos. That I might help some girl who's watching YouTube videos late at night in her bedroom because she just wants to get pregnant. And they're having a hard time. Okay. Bless. And, um... Yeah, good luck and pray. <laughs> okay, bye now.